Friends, welcome once again to Worship at Home. It's great to be with you in your lounge rooms this morning. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, a time in the church year when we uh, try our hardest to wrap our heads around the mystery of our God being three persons in one. I invite you to stand as we uh, share the opening words, which you'll see uh, (laughs) on the screen. God the Father is in this place. The love of God is with us. Jesus, our Redeemer, is in this place. The grace of our Lord is with us. And of course, the Holy Spirit is also with us in this place. The communion of the Spirit is with us. So we begin our time of worship as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Friends in Christ, let us listen to the Spirit's voice as we come before God our Father and ask Him in the name of, uh, to confess our sins and ask Him in the name of Jesus to forgive us. God of grace, love and perfect communion, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, soul and mind. We have not always loved our neighbour as ourselves. We have often ignored your commandments, strayed from your way and followed other gods. And we have often also been reluctant to go out and participate in your mission. Have mercy on each of us, forgive our sin and raise us to new life again, that we may serve you faithfully and give glory and honour to your holy name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. 
all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus Christ. And it is on his authority alone that the forgiveness of sins is declared to you and also to people of all nations. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to each of you. And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's peace be with each of you. Amen. We now hear God's word to us for this morning. The first reading for this Sunday is written in Genesis 1, chapter 1, um, reading through to chapter 2, verse 4a. The triune God creates the world through his word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every dwinged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the 
and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, <clears throat> everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the, hev the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading for this morning is written in 2 Corinthians 13, reading from verse 11 to 14. The apostolic blessing in the name of the triune God. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel for this Holy Trinity Sunday is written in Matthew 28, uh, reading from verse 16, and it's the well-known passage of the Great Commission, what we call uh, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated, if you're not already, and uh, it's now time for the children's message. Well, good morning to uh, any children who are watching and participating in worship at home this morning. As I said at the beginning of the service, today is Holy Trinity Sunday. Uh, there's some, another big word there, Trinity. Trinity means that our God, or that we believe our God, is three persons in one. Now, this is quite hard for us to completely understand, to get our heads around, but we do our best uh, to understand this. And so this morning I have brought a couple of, prop, couple of props with me to um, help explain what it means that our God is three persons in one. I've brought with me um, a phomotrope and some of you may remember, you might not, that last year I used uh, this in one of my children's message. I can't even, children's messages, I'm not even sure which one it was, but I love it so much that I wanted to show you it again. So a quick reminder, a thomotrope is uh, what people used to use uh, quite a while ago, probably a couple hundred years ago, uh, when there were no TVs, no cinemas, no Netflix, uh, you couldn't stream anything on your phone. Uh, so things like thomotropes were around. They're little sort of movable films uh, or animations that you can watch um, uh, for entertainment and for enjoyment purposes. 
Now this uh, thermotrope has two pictures. Hopefully we can see that on the camera. Yep, I got a nod, that's good. So we have a fish bowl, and then we also have a goldfish. And uh, so in my little demonstration here, the two pictures represent God the Father who created the world, created fish and other things as well, the sea and, and everything else that we heard in the Bible reading. And the, uh, the straw that, sorry, I shouldn't move it too much, the straw that uh, the pictures are attached to represent Jesus. So God created the world, but he did that through Jesus. Jesus sort of helped the world uh, go into motion. Hopefully you can see the fish in the fishbowl there as I spin the thermotrope. If not, you'll have to take my word for it. But there's someone, someone missing here, isn't there? We have God the Father and God the Son, but we also need God the Holy Spirit. And he's represented on uh, the other thermotrope that I have here. Uh, you can see that I've coloured in the fish um, and I've also coloured in uh, his fishbowl. And so God created the world through Jesus. God the Father created the world through Jesus the Son. And the Holy Spirit gives the world its colour, its life, its breath, the breath in our lungs and in the lungs of all living creatures. So when we spin this thermotrope, we can see uh, God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit uh, working together to create the beautiful picture. Hopefully you can see that one as well. Now, of course, these thermotropes uh, don't help us to understand God fully. They're a bit limited, but they at least help us understand a bit better who God is as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and how he works in each of our lives. So you might like to create a thermotrope at home and, and use it to help you uh, understand God just that little bit better. How about we pray and then I'm going to talk to the mums and dads, talk a bit more about the Holy Trinity, but I won't be using the thermotrope uh, anymore. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank and praise you that you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit, our three in one God. Even though we can't fully understand how that's possible, we know it's true and we thank you for how you are at work in our lives, loving us and blessing us and giving us all, good, all the good things that we need each day. Thank you for who you are, Lord God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, children. It's great to spend this time with you. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Friends, my message for this morning is uh, based on the gospel reading we heard from Matthew 28. Uh, the Great Commission, as it's often uh, referred to as, but perhaps better described as the great mission of the Holy Trinity. Let's pray. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, thank you for calling us to participate in your great mission to go out and make disciples of all nations. Fill each of us with your grace and truth now as we dwell in your word, so that we can bring Jesus to others in the week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The release of Nelson Mandela from prison in 1990 was a pivotal point uh, or pivotal event in the history of South Africa and also in the history of the world. Before and during Mandela's uh, unjust incarceration, the apartheid legis legislation was enforced by the South African government. This meant that uh, people were segregated, were well, racially segregated in, in all aspects of daily life, with, uh, of course, black South Africans experiencing some terrible uh, racial discrimination. 
This institutionalized racism meant that black people were not allowed to vote. They were not allowed to travel into areas that were designated for white people only unless they had a, an exemption for work. And it also meant that they were evicted from their land and resettled elsewhere. It's quite a familiar story in lots of nations. But Mandela's release from prison, which was granted by the then South African president, signalled the dawn of a new age. By 1994, apartheid had been abolished and Mandela had become the president of his country. And since this time, uh, South Africa has been continuing to heal from the scars of apartheid as it seeks to achieve complete racial equality amongst its people. Fast forward about 30 years, or exactly 30 years, and the protests and the riots and the looting uh, that are currently happening in Minneapolis and other uh, cities across America and also around the world. Uh, because of the uh, unlawful death of an African-American man, uh, George Floyd, by a white police officer, may also turn out to be the catalyst for a new age. It's probably uh, a bit too early to tell, but one can only hope that this tragic event will finally bring about meaningful change in a culture that condones uh, racially motivated police brutality and systemic uh, racism against African Americans. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, uh, in, a, in the Gospel reading we heard this morning, we also hear about the dawn of a new age. And it bears uh, some similarities to the stories of Nelson Mandela and George Floyd. The catalyst for this new age, for this new beginning, was the unlawful death of God's Son on a Roman cross, followed by the Holy Spirit releasing him from the shackles of hell. Matthew's conclusion to his account of Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension is both uh, a summary of the themes and events which he has reported throughout his gospel, but also a commentary on the new world order that Jesus had instituted. Now that Jesus had uh, defeated, sin, uh, defeated sin and the grave, perhaps his first disciples thought that he would remain on earth to continue the mission his father had given him. But instead, Jesus commissions them to be his hands and feet to carry on his work. He says to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you to do. The references uh, here to heaven and earth and all nations in this commissioning, in Jesus' commissioning of his disciples, underscores the global dimensions of God's rescue mission. God is absolutely resolute in his work to repair his fractured creation through the death and resurrection of Christ. His goal, of course, is to bring all people into his kingdom, which has already begun to, uh, to come into reality. The age of sin and death brought about by Adam and Eve's sin is, com is gradually coming to an end. And the new age of everlasting life in Jesus is coming into focus. And just as the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit all played a role in the creation of the world, as we heard in the reading from Genesis 1, all three persons of the Trinity are also involved in this recreation process in sealing the cracks and canyons created by sin and death. It probably goes without saying that the mission of our triune God is certainly ambitious and seems unachievable according to our finite human understanding. 
Sending Jesus to be the catalyst for this new age is an astounding act of grace and power, something that the world has never seen before. But perhaps the most ambitious part of God's rescue plan is that he chooses to use us, you and me, the very people whose sin has caused creation to fracture as, his, as conduits for his spirit's redeeming and restoring work. The disciples are referred to in Matthew 28 as the eleven. And they are described as worshipping Jesus, but at the same time expressing doubt. These are the people that, al that our almighty God chooses to work through. Jesus could have easily chosen to stay on the earth and, do, and complete the work himself. But he chose all those who believe in him. He chose each of us to continue his mission. So this morning, let's take a closer look uh, at how God is wanting to use us to help usher in this new age of forgiveness, eternal life and new creation in Christ. Let's examine a few key words, a few key phrases uh, in the Great Commission and let's see how we're tracking uh, at being Jesus' hands and feet here in Strathalbyn, Salem and Callington. Firstly, Jesus instructs us to go. It's such a small word, a word, but it is ever so important. It reminds us that we aren't called to sit in the pews each Sunday or at the moment sit on our couches or in our living room and wait for God to bring people to us into our circle of influence. Of course, God sometimes does this. But he wants us to go out into our communities, to go out on a limb in our conversations with non-believers and to go wherever his spirit may lead us to share the gospel with others. This uh, going out business seems like it's quite challenging. Secondly, we are to make disciples of all nations. God's mission is not just local, but global. God deeply loves the people of every country, every nation on earth, and he deeply loves people from all walks of life. For us, this means that uh, people we don't usually associate with or perhaps individuals that make us feel uncomfortable might be the very people that God is calling us to share the gospel with not sure about you but it makes me feel just a bit anxious it makes me anxious just thinking about those people about who these people are in my life and finally Jesus commands us to not just invite people to be baptized and to become a member of a church but also to teach them to obey everything which he has commanded us to do in his word he wants us to teach them the Ten Commandments to help them learn and put into practice the way of life his word instructs us to live. Jesus wants us to not only give people biblical knowledge but also encourage them in their discipleship journey. Friends I wonder do you consider yourself to be much of a teacher of others? Again, I'm not sure about you, but I find the Great Commission difficult to live up to all the time. Of course, I want to see the new age of God continuing to flourish, and I desperately want to participate in it. But it's not all that easy uh, to go and make disciples of all nations and teach others about Jesus, about the way in which he wants us to live our lives. Sometimes, if I'm honest, I'm too lazy or too scared to go out on a limb in my witnessing to others. Often I identify people who I don't think deserve to be baptised and receive God's love and forgiveness. Or people who I struggle to bring Jesus to because I feel, of, because I feel unsure of how I should approach them. 
And of course, discipleship is often full of pain and suffering and discomfort. Jesus makes this obvious elsewhere in the Gospels. So how can I confidently communicate these truths to someone who is new to the faith or seeking God? I'm hoping that uh, at least some of you may be able to resonate with my thoughts, with my struggles to, to uh, fulfill the great commission Jesus has given us. Thankfully, it's God's mission, not ours. You see, Matthew 28 is not so much about the great commission, but rather the great uh, mission of the Trinity. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit are an unstoppable community of God's grace and truth and light. And God invites each one of us to participate in his mission, knowing and trusting that he won't fail because, because God is far greater than our shortcomings and often reserved discipleship efforts. Friends, what great confidence this gives us in our great commission efforts. God has indeed chosen each of you to be his mouthpiece, to be his hands and his feet in his recreation efforts. In the new age that is upon us because of Jesus' death and resurrection. Those who worship him but also have moments of doubt and weakness are the servants whom God has chosen to tell others about Christ. When we reflect on this, when we soak this in, how can we not humbly fall on our knees and thank God for using us as he continues to recreate us at the same time? So friends, let's go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded us. And as you do, go in peace, knowing that Jesus is with you, is with you always until the very end of the age. Amen. I invite you to stand now uh, as we confess our faith in our triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, God our Father has created us. In his love, he has sent his son Jesus to redeem us. And now he gathers us, his holy people, by the power of his spirit. Therefore, let us come to him in the spirit through the name of Jesus, asking him for all our needs. In our prayers this morning, we particularly remember uh, the family of Keith Pfeiffer, uh, who died in this past week. Uh, we bring them before God, asking for his comfort and peace to be with them. We pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
Thank you for making yourself known through your mighty works of creation and salvation. We praise and worship you as our three in one God and embrace the mystery of who you are. Keep us all true to the Trinitarian faith so that the community of the church may flow from the community of the Trinity. Please continue to show yourself also to the world by spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help each of us to follow your command to go out and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything you have commanded us in your word. Thank you for graciously choosing us to be your hands and feet as you go about recreating your creation, which has been fractured by sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that all people may value human life as made in your image. Stop us from abusing and misusing our fellow human beings and help us to treat them as our brothers and sisters in your family. May the peace of Christ rule instead of rioting and disorder as people in America and other countries seek justice and meaningful change to cultures that condone systemic racism. We also ask for your mercy on the citizens of countries whose economies have suffered the most due to the COVID-19 pandemic, bringing poverty and malnourishment to many people. Graciously use your global church and foreign aid to bring financial support food and spiritual healing to these people, especially those in rural areas and those who barely earned enough to live on even before they lost their jobs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Angela McMurtry her siblings and their extended families as they grieve the death of their dad, Keith Pfeiffer. Thank you for the faith and sure hope that Keith has in you, which means his body and soul are now enjoying eternal peace. Wrap your loving arms around the Pfeiffer family and all those who, who knew and loved Keith and fill them with resurrection hope. We also pray for Trevor Yench and Kevin Yench as they, along with other family members, grieve the death of their cousin, Laurel Ailes, niece Samuel. Comfort them all with your loving presence and remind them of the hope of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, please give strength and health to the sick and all who are troubled. Strengthen them in their suffering and build their faith in Christ and grant them healing according to your gracious will. Please meet the needs of all those who currently need your special care, including Elodie Worst, Andrew Eckert, Marilyn Hall, Gwen Lange, Penny Goy, Don Smith, John and Mavis Angel, Catherine Jopic and her family, Alex Muller, Karen O'Brien, Debbie Felicity and Cynthia, as well as those whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord God, you are the ground of our existence and the foundation of our faith. Support us in this faith as we live in your name. For you are, fa for you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Splendor of the King. Close 
Friends, welcome again to Worship at Home. On that note, uh, Worship at Home will continue uh, at least for the next month. Uh, we haven't made any firm decisions yet on uh, when we might be able to return and how we might be able to return to worshipping in our church buildings. You would have received an email from me, uh, otherwise it's also in the bulletin. Uh, a notice uh, saying that uh, inviting you rather to complete a survey uh, either online or by uh, on a paper copy if you don't have access to uh, the internet so that you can contribute to the discussion about uh, our return to worship so I remind you and encourage you to fill that out um, over this next week as I mentioned in the prayers Keith Pfeiffer died about a week ago um, and his funeral service will be held here at Strathalbyn um, on Friday the 12th of June, so this coming Friday. Of course, because of the gathering restrictions, a reminder that it's invitation only. Uh, but the good news is that a live stream of, of the service will be available, uh, which you can either watch at the time of the service, which is 2 p.m., um, but it also can be viewed afterwards. So stay tuned for an email this week uh, with the link uh, to that live stream for those who, who knew Keith and who would like to um, attend. Birthdays. Now, we have quite a few birthdays this week. Um, quite a few. Three on the same day as well. So, we, uh, so happy birthday to the following people. Mavis Angel, whose birthday was on Thursday. Malcolm Swartz, who turned 80 um, on Friday. And to Bevan Newman, Trevor Yench, and also Margaret Donhart, who all have their birthdays uh, today, Sunday. And out of those three, Margaret has a significant birthday. She's turning the big uh, seven O's. So happy birthday to all those people. Um, I hope you in have enjoyed your days uh, celebrating uh, your birthday. So let's celebrate further by singing It's Your Birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday, so have a happy day. You're getting older, you're getting older. You're older every day. Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. And that is why we say, have a happy birthday. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Happy birthday again to all those people. Uh, that's it for this morning. Uh, as you would have seen in the bulletin, I'll be on leave next week. Uh, so Bryce Clark will, be, will become a YouTube star and he'll be leading and preaching um, uh, next Sunday, the 14th of June. So God bless your week and I'll see you in a fortnight's time.